Honey, bonjour, everybody. Mops kesini ko endiş ne kaz, takna minisini donju ba. Kiçiji en azak gendi da, denju bam kak makna minisini. Segna ingijin dare, su Saint Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians in Dorbin Douglas. Michigan dore amojibwe elishna bi queen now. Good morning, everybody. I just saying buju in my language, introducing myself. Um, I'm from Michigan. I just live about six hours north, um, and my tribe comes from uh, the, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We have a seven-county service area up there, and uh, um, up in Bawachang or Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. So um, happy to be here today. I just want to give a, a huge Esenam uh, miigwech to the Clarences and Andy. Uh, who helped us out to greet the day today with a beautiful sunrise ceremony. Um, it was uh, uh, so, so hard to get up this morning, <laughs> but it was so worth it. Um, and I, we had 42 people show up for sunrise ceremony. And I have to tell you, I've been to some of them where only one person showed up. So it was beautiful today. Yeah, but a big shout out for, for that beautiful ceremony. And uh, we're, we're so thankful to the Pokagon Band of Pottawatomie and the, uh, uh, wow, the Traditions and Repatriation Committee who's helped us out so much um, with guidance and love and direction and support for this conference. Uh, that's, um, but I'm, I'm up here actually to, <laughs> to introduce our guests, right? Um, so so um, we actually have some, um, uh, Ojibwe filmmaker brothers on site, Adam and Zach Khalil. They're both uh, members as citizens of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians um, and from Bawatang or Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, but they're currently located in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, their work centers on indigenous narratives in the present and looks toward the future through the use of innovative nonfiction forms. Their first feature length uh, documentary, and not to say, was. Uh, uh, I guess premiered in 2016. Um, following that, they had another uh, short film called The Violence of Civiliz or Civilization Without Secrets in 2018. And right now they're working, um, well, the, for the past five years, they have been working with the Michigan Anishinaabe Cultural Preservation and Repatriation Alliance, or MACPRA here in Michigan, um, to document repatriation stories. Um, they're working on a film called On Kopijigan. And uh, we have them here today. And uh, I also just wanna say that they're lifelong friends of mine. <laughs> um, we, we grew up uh, in Tribal Youth Council together uh, and have supported each other uh, through this life. And it seems like our paths keep getting crossed in repatriation work, which we would have never expected when we were, you know, 10 years old swimming at Sugar Island, um, you know, having sandwiches for lunch. Um, also, uh, um, I, I know I'm very connected with Adam and Zach uh, because of uh, a special person. Um, who was a light in my life when I was younger and someone who took time to care about me when, when things were a, a little difficult for me. And that happens to be their mother, Allie. And uh, she really inspired a lot of who I am. She obviously inspires a lot of who they are. And so um, it means so much to me to stand up here and to introduce two of my favorite people in the world some of the most hardworking and passionate people about telling these stories and telling them in a good way um, and documenting what it's really like to work for the ancestors. And so uh, I guess without further ado, I will turn it over to them, but please welcome Adam and Zach Khalil. Ani Bojo Shingwak and Dishnakas Bawateng and Donjaba. My name is Adam Khalil, originally from Bawateng, and was currently called Sault Ste. Marie. I just want to say Chi Miigwech, the AIA, for having us in the Bokagans. And yeah, it's really amazing to be here and present a little bit of our work. 
It is from understanding that power comes. And the power in the ceremony was an understanding of what it meant. And while I stood there, I saw more than I could tell, and I understood more than I saw. I did not have to remember these things. They remembered themselves all these years. sort of seven fires prophecy from our perspective of Mbalate in Sisi and Mary Michigan. Um, it's available online if anyone wants to check it out for free. Um, but I think now that we're kind of getting low on time, we want to talk about, you know, monocultury and the film we're making, uh, unless you all know that we're here uh, and interested in talking about the repatriation work that you all are doing as well. If anyone is interested in speaking to us or participating in the film on or off camera, uh, just to share their perspectives, we're, we're really open. Uh, and also just to know that the film, the end goal for it is a national broadcast on PBS, if all goes well, so really hoping to get it out to as broad an audience as possible. Um, but I think now we have like a really short, but well not that short, 10, 11 minute uh, sort of sneak peek of uh, work in progress of the film that we're working on, and it's which might feature some familiar faces. And it's very much a work in progress too, so we're really open to feedback. And, yeah, just want to share it at this sort of vulnerable state and, and see what you all think later. And looking forward to meeting you all hopefully later on. Yeah, I just want to stress that uh, we work very iteratively, so we'd love to hear what people think about this, the good and the bad, as we continue to work on the project, hopefully for a national broadcast in 2024. And once again, Gina Gwich, to everyone for being here, AAI for having us, and yeah, literal truth. Sorry, we're kind of nervous. <laughs> One morning in 1784, Thomas Jefferson became America's first archaeologist when he decided to indulge his curiosity and unearth human remains from an Indian burial mound. Since that day, archaeologists, anthropologists, amateur explorers, and hobbyists have collected and sent thousands of boxes of indigenous human remains to museums and universities often in the hope that they would become the objects of scientific study and help prove widely held beliefs about indigenous racial inferiority. When I enter museums, I'm not looking at what's on the walls. I'm wondering what's behind them. I wonder if people know that they paid $20 to enter a museum that's holding our ancestors hostage. This core question, who owns human remains? Legally, the institutions own them. Spiritually speaking, we know that nobody owns them. Non-native scholars and museum professionals are really uncomfortable with the ways that indigenous communities collapse time in relation to objects. There's an assumption of, in the Western mindset that distance in time through years means distance in relationship, and that's just simply not the case. It's like in Potawatomi, our word for ancestor or great-grandmother, great-grandchild is in um, and so that means simultaneously ancestor and future generation. We emphasize this notion of relationship rather than our place on some made-up linear timeline. 
it's that tether of relevance that's important, not so much how long will something happen or how long something will take to happen. Grandfather, give us the courage and the strength as we make these decisions for our people and for our ancestors to guide us through our days. Uh, we thank you um, for this beautiful prayer. My name is Colleen Rose Medicine. My spirit name is Wapshka Sinque. I'm Turtle Clan. I currently serve as the cultural repatriation specialist for the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. Repatriation is a really loaded word. Um, I often describe it as a lot of worldviews coming together. In Indian country, repatriation means returning our ancestors and their objects back to their communities for an appropriate and respectful reburial. I got a call about a month ago from the Algon County of the Bowl Society. They had discovered that they had ancestors in their possession. Just for my notes, if, do you know how many ancestors there are and if there's any objects? One ancestor. He said it's almost a complete ancestor. I don't think it is connected. Yeah. Ready to meet you? Yes, I'm ready. Is number 269. MACRA is the Michigan Anishinaabek Cultural Preservation and Repatriation Alliance. The original vision of MACRA is that all the tribes in Michigan come together and do this important work to bring the ancestors home. At the University of Michigan Museum of Anthropological Archaeology, approximately 801 minimum number of individuals have been repatriated to date. When my grandkids and that asked me about it, I explained, I'm bringing your grandpa and grandma's home and putting them back in Mother Earth. It's the most stifling, crumbling feeling when you go into the bowels of the museum where they keep boxes and boxes filled with our ancestors' remains. Indigenous communities didn't have the same structure for cemeteries as our contemporary Euro American cemeteries do. They don't have clear defining markers for where they are buried. And there is no quantitative value that you can put on how many sites there are because it's everywhere. And you can feel the presence everywhere. And so for hundreds of years now, development has occurred in these areas and many ancestors and their funerary objects are being unearthed. And it is disturbing those individuals on their journey through that Western door. They've been digging up our burial sites for 500 years. Probably take 500 years to undo all of that work. For us, that's only one part of what we do. The bigger job is taking care of those ancestors and those artifacts and watching them over those. I see it more as caretaking. And so repatriation is just one portion of that work. Matthew Bustler and Dishnikas, Boda Wadmi and Dow, Pekinik in the Band Douglas. Mushika and Dona, the Wajak and Dochbia, the Wajak in the Dad Odo P, 
I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi. My responsibilities are to preserve, protect, and maintain record of all archaeological and cultural sites in our in Aboriginal homelands. Say I were to be informed by a private landowner that there had been erosion on their property and they're starting to see uh, ceramic pottery and then all of a sudden they you know notice that there was some kind of a bone. Well, generally speaking, if you find human remains, uh, it's required that you contact the local authority. You have to call the police. The police come and investigate, and then they contact the tribes when they're like, hey, this is actually Native American. I've had it happen once. We went out there, we brought the GPS unit, we plotted in where they found the remains, recording the location of where our ancestors were and always had been. And now it's for certain protected. Yeah, it's really unusual work. This is really unusual work. Eva Winnetohi, the Kamoko Pai. My name is Eva. Um, I am from Mesa Grande. I am indigenous to this part of town in San Diego. And I work here at the San Diego Museum of Man. The history of this institution, it's an anthropological museum. The more ancestors they could get in here, the better. You know, anthropology is the study of humans, right? But yet they dehumanize human remains. This museum has hidden ancestors from communities blatantly lying to them saying we don't have them. So the history between this museum and indigenous communities has not been a great one at all. So um, they are transitioning right now, um, starting great work and changing policies to protect the ancestors. And basically I am the person that facilitates the ancestors going home. Repatriation, it's actually a really long process. It doesn't take overnight. Indigenous communities will contact us or we contact them. Once that happens, consultation begins. We kind of give them an inventory of what we think might be theirs, give them a chance to look it over and have that time to decide what belongs to them. Then it's a process of paperwork. We have a 30 day waiting period for any other indigenous communities to give input or contest. After that 30 day waiting period, that's when the magic happens. <laughs> um, that's when it gets very exciting. Um, that, that means that repatriation will happen soon. My office becomes more and more empty. I see boxes leaving. That's the rewarding part. The thought of knowing that that ancestor is back home, back in the hands of a caring, loving community. That's my favorite part of the repatriation process. Give me a question to NAGPRA. I also forgot to say that we've been doing in the film in collaboration and consultation with NAGPRA for five years now. And like you mentioned, hoping in the next two years to finish up the project. And again, this is a very uh, early sample work in progress. It only features the first two years of footage, and there's about 300 hours of additional material that we'll be sifting through, as well as gathering some more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for checking it out. I'm looking forward to having some conversations in the future. Come reach out. Jimmy Butcher, have a nice.